So the good news is that the gravity is functional. The bad news is that the gravity was functional and falling down a ladder hurts. Ow. If, if, if you're not dead, you, you, you will be soon. Landing here was a mi mi mistake, and you, you know it. Oh god. No. No. I'm not letting them scare me off. Come on, Nim. You can do this. I can do this. Okay, listeners. I'm in a fairly large, rectangular room. There's what appears to be a galley that's kitchen to you landfolk, and what, honestly, I would call a living room. There are a series of plush but ancient-looking couches pushed up against the walls opposite a large viewport. Oh! Listeners, I found a data pad. This might be the key that blows the whole investigation open. I'm plugging it into my field data pad, which, of course, has been scrubbed of any of my information and is untraceable. Oh, there's an audio file. Begin secure transmission. We're two years into the mission now. This will be my final transmittal home before we... Huh? What are you doing up so late? Shh. Go back to sleep. I forgot to send these earlier. It's okay. Make it quick. Mark is stealing the pillows and he's not as soft as you. <laughs> All right, sweet potato. I'll be done in a minute. <laughs> Everyone has acclimated to the altered ship's air and gravity, so there shouldn't be any problems transitioning to our destination environment. I think we have a good chance of making this work. We haven't torn each other apart yet, and we've got enough of the things we need and... Plenty of entertainment and work to do around the ship. I'll leave this here. It's late and my husbands are waiting. See you on the other side. End secure transmission. Begin new call. Hmm. Okay, so now I know of at least three crew members. A woman and her husbands, one of whom is named Mark. And I know that the mission lasted at least two years. I wonder... Oh, scans are complete. Okay, it's a standard, human-friendly atmosphere. I'm going to switch to the filter to save my oxygen, but keep the mask on just in case that changes. I guess I'll start by looking around. I wonder why they made the room like this. I mean, it does look a lot like a living room, and over here, the kitchen... Oh, God. Is this blood? Am I walking in blood? Oh god, the floor's all sticky and everything's red and... Oh. Okay, no, it isn't blood. I don't really know what it is. Some weird alien floor surface, I guess. Who has sticky floors? That's just gross. Moving on. What was I saying? Right. Kitchen. This definitely looks like a kitchen. Like, this is a dining table with a data pad on it. Oh, wow. I wonder if I can access this. Does this belong to the humans who were forced to live here until they were eaten? Or is this alien technology? Oh, Gosh, oh wow, this is really exciting. Like, hang on a sec. I'm going to see if my device can connect with this. Okay, it's scanning. This could take a while. Anyway, whether this belongs to the humans or the aliens, this is groundbreaking. Surely there will be some evidence here of what happened, what, what was being done to these people. Did they know in advance they were going to be eaten, or did they just know that sometimes one of the others would disappear? And how... Oh, my stars. My data pad was able to connect to this one, too. And listeners, the first file it found was another audio log. Are you ready? Here we go. 
Om has been a huge help. The kidlets trust her. The magic of grandmothers hasn't worn off yet, I guess. I was against her coming along at first, but now that she's here and we're on the way... I'm grateful she's here. She's a brilliant mechanic. Preventative maintenance is always better than for me. Cloning me. We should have enough stock from the clones to last us, as we can always harvest more from them. Some great specimens in cryo. I know Mission Control wants to see what they can splice into their... Last resort. They currently have on the ground. I know it's often a mistake to splice native and non-native. Empty night? Did you hear that? Clones! Harvesting vivisection? Oh my. Oh golly, this... This is real. This is... This is an atrocity. I... I guess I was right about there being something happening here. It's different, though, to know for sure. The recording's awfully garbled, though. I wonder if there's a way to clear it up. Maybe if... Oh, my stars. Stars and stones, there's an arm. A... a disembodied arm just lying on this bench with knives sticking out of it. Oh, God. Oh, wait, this is... It's fake. It's fake? What? Why has it got knives in it? Oh my god, are they stabbing fake human arms as practice? Oh, okay, the knives come out really easily. I think... I think it's a knife block? Yep, knife block. Okay, that's really weird. I don't really know what to make of that. Why would... Ugh, I don't understand this place so far. Okay, I think I'm going to move to another room, but first I'm going to copy these files so I have a backup. For my new listeners, I mentioned this data pad before. I always carry a spare that can't connect to the net so that I have a secure copy of everything I find. You can never be too careful. Okay, and they're sinking. Right, onwards. One of the doors has pictures of meat products on it. I think I'm going to go with the other door. The one with the stars. Oh, it's the cockpit. Fantastic. Boop. Oh, for star's sake, another one. A skull. No, a whole fake skeleton this time. Somebody had a really morbid sense of humor. I mean, it doesn't even look that realistic. It's... It's... Oh. Oh, stars. It's real. It's real! Nim's Nebulous Notions was written by Jamie Drake, A.L. Reynolds, Morgan Juna, and Aaron Kian. It was produced by Passival Pez Productions in association with A.L. Reynolds and Jamie Drake. This episode featured, in order of appearance, Sarah Roach as Nim, Alan Winter as Callum Riggs Jorgen, Elisa Park as Katie Riggs Jorgen, and Matty Marley as Emery Riggs Jorgen, with credits read by Aaron Kian. Our website is nimsnotions.com. If you want to drop us a line, you can email us at nimsnotions at gmail.com or send a tweet our way at, at nimsnotions. <laughs>